Been sleeping for too long. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. See the sunshine gazing through the window pane, yeah. blazing like endo flame. It's time to wake, wake up. up, come to your senses, man. Snow is all around you, but you don't play in the winter game. Cartridges surround you, but you ain't playing Nintendo games. Load them up. Greetings and welcome back to the Woke Podcast. I am your host, Brandon Jones, and we're back for another one. This is part three. Of the four part series on the eight laws of change Based on the book By author Stephen A. Schwartz I highly recommend that you check out this book Or at least google Stephen A. Schwartz's name Or google the eight laws of change I think this is very very constructive information To either organize groups that you're in Whether that's educational groups, social groups Your community in general Or just getting your own stuff together to push forward in life. And that's the approach that I have taken with this series. Is how do you apply these eight laws of change into your own individual life? Because change is going to happen regardless if you're prepared for it or if you're not prepared for it. And if you're not prepared for change, well, (laughs) it could have a negative impact. But it doesn't always have a negative impact. But it's better to be prepared than not to be prepared. You know what I mean? So, on part three here, we're going to get into law five and law six. Law five and law six. And we are getting very close to the end of the series. If this is your first time checking out the Woke Podcast, be sure to check out the previous two episodes, uh, part one and part two, um, on the eight laws of change. And be sure to subscribe to the podcast because, hey... That's what I'm here for. <laughs> I'm here to uh, produce a constructive impact for you and those around you as well for myself. That's what I try to do in everything um, in all my efforts. So I welcome you to the Woke Podcast. If you are a returning listener, welcome back. And let's get into Law 5 and Law 6 of the 8 Laws of Change. Law 5. So... Law 5. Each person in the group, regardless of gender, religion, race, or culture, must enjoy fundamental equality even as the various roles in the hierarchy of the effort are respected. What this is indicating is that in order to build, you're going to have to have diversity. You know, it being someone who would consider himself pro-black, I understand that in in the system that I live in, as we live in, you are going to need to work with everybody. You might not want to, you might not feel like that's the best thing, but if you put things together logically, you have to. We are in a system that determines that you need to lean on other people. Now, it depends on how much leaning you're doing. Now, you don't have to do extreme amounts of leading leaning um but you do have to rely on other people to get things done i mean you just don't control everything and this law really highlights the importance of building a system you know one of the things that i like to work on one of the things that i like to do is understanding that networking is extremely important and you don't have to let someone know all your intentions right you don't have to let someone know all your plans but you might need a skill or access that they have or resource that they have that you might not have and you have to figure out ways to leverage that relationship to achieve whatever goal or outcome you are looking for. And that means you're gonna have to work with people who may have different spirituality or religious beliefs in you. They may be from a different race or ethnic group than you. They might not even understand your culture, but you're gonna have to figure out a way to work with them. They may be a different gender, but you're gonna have to figure out a way to work with them. Like, that's just the that's just the society that we're in. You might not like it, but the person that you may need might not respect your religion, race, color, or creed. And that's just real. It sucks. But that's why it's very important to approach life as kind of like a business. Because in business, there's little emotion. There is emotion because 
if you didn't have emotion you wouldn't take action you wouldn't be you know doing things emotion uh, emotions are the fuel to our actions and our behaviors but if you approach things from a business standpoint and use logic sometimes it's going to make you compromise on some of your own principles some of the things that make you feel uncomfortable just for, so that you get the job done a lot of people don't want to accept that reality but that's real in business you have to work with people that you don't like in business you gotta work with people that don't like you now that doesn't mean you should compromise who you are but at some point sometimes you have to bend on your boundaries sometimes but the important part with that is you need to have boundaries <laughs> see a lot of people don't a lot of people don't have any damn boundaries and they're just out here aimless and getting lost in the wilderness right but sometimes you got to make sure that what you're doing, you're trying to reach your, you know, your maximum uh, success in anything that you're doing. And in order to do that, sometimes you got to collaborate with people that might not be about what you're trying to be about. Right. But this is why it's important to develop a system. System. And in the law, it talks about um, the fundamental equality, even as various roles and hierarchies of the effort are respected you know there is hierarchy right and you have to understand from the position you're coming from where are you in the hierarchy are you at the top are you in the middle are you at the bottom and then you got to figure out how do you navigate within that system within that hierarchy hopefully you're coming from a position of power you know that's what i preach is you know in many circumstances it's possible that you come from a position of power because that's the key but if you're always coming from a position of lack or position of being um, subjugated, it's very hard for you to do anything. But you got to know your role. You got to know your role and understand your position. You got to know your role and understand your position in the system that you're operating in. Whether that's, you know, work, whether that's the community you live in, whether that's your family structure, you need to understand your role. And if your role doesn't feel comfortable to you, you need to figure out a way to make it work for you. And if there is no way, you might need to develop an exit strategy. And this comes with change. Because understanding your position and understanding who you need to collaborate with is important for you to make moves. If you want different outcomes, you're going to have to do different things. Some of those different things are going to be uncomfortable. That's what this law is talking about. You can't think that you're just a one woman, one man army out here. It's not. No. You rely on other people, whether you like them or not. And you might get disrespected. You might get not appreciated. But at the end of the day, are you getting the outcomes that you want from the situation? And if you're not, these are some things you need to pay attention to. What is your role in understanding your position within the system that you're in? It's just that simple. And that's what this law is talking about. Knowing where you're at. Very important for change. And you got to think about this because your role and your position may be different depending on the environment and situation that you're in. You might be the alpha at home, but you are the beta at work. <laughs> You got to think about this. So that's law five. Understand your role. Understand your position. Know your role and understand your position. Law six. Law number six. The individuals in the group must forswear violence in word, act, or thought. Once again, law number six. The individuals in the group must forswear violence in word, act, or thought. Now, this is an interesting one. The author, when he was writing this book, he was talking, he was referencing a lot of social change and talking about social movements. So he pulled this out, you know, and in stereotypical fashion, talks about the civil rights movement and the non-violence of Gandhi and Martin Luther King. And you, know, you know how they do all the time. <laughs> they always reference the non-violence movement. And, you know, he referenced more of a group, you know, a group mentality for this portion. But I think this also applies to the individual. You know, it's, a, it's very easy for, especially in the 
time that we live to have outrage. We have an outrage culture. People getting upset about this. People getting upset about that. Hashtagging this. Changing our profile pictures to that. You know. Wearing this t-shirt. Wearing that t-shirt. Not supporting this company. Deleting that app. We live in an outrage culture. And I think that we need to temper our expectations a lot of times. When it comes to some of the outrage. One thing about violence. Violence can be physical. Violence can be verbal. Violence can be emotional. Right? So he talked about that. He said in word. He said violent. For, for swearing violence in word, act, and thought. You know, I categorize violence in two categories. What I call hard violence and what I call soft violence. You know, hard violence is what most people think of when they hear the word violent. You know, fighting, shooting, stabbing, physically roughing someone up. That's violence. Like That's hard violence. Soft violence is what we entertain ourselves with and consume on a daily basis. Gossip, uh, flaming, roasting, or frying, depending on where you're at. You know, playing the dozens is the old school term for it. But, you know, joking and clowning on people. You know? Talking about people, exposing people on social media. You know, trying to expose people online. Like, these are soft forms of violence. And in order for you to make change happen in your life, you need to reduce the amount of intake you have from this. Because that stuff is not constructive at the end of the day. Name calling, that stuff's not really helping. It makes you feel good in the moment. It makes you, you know, put someone down and make you feel good in the moment. But long term, stuff doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything at, at all. And this is why I would encourage you to temper yourself and not jump into the outrage or into the nonsense so easily. I mean, there's literally a market for the nonsense. Don't get me wrong. I've thought about, you know, manipulating myself. I might still do it. But th- think about stuff like world star hip hop, you know, the view, <laughs> all that stuff. I mean, that stuff is just gossip. We have a whole, you know, TMZ, we have a whole market, a whole system, economic system based on this folks like Tommy Sotomayor like (laughs) like all these people they are built on what I would call soft violence and the nonsense and we have to be very careful if you want change to happen in your life you got to temper how much of that you want to intake I mean we can jump on all the media shows and stuff like that but it's there it's there for you if you want it and a lot of people do a lot of people feed on the negative non-constructive stuff but, you know, and, and there's a reasons for that. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm holier than thou because, you know, I will dive into some nonsense too from time to time. But I have learned to really reduce that because it used to be bad. I used to be the dude on VH1 all day watching all the shows. <laughs> like that was a long time ago. But I learned that that wasn't really helping my life. And as I've cut myself off from a lot of that negativity, um, you know, I've, I've had a lot more space to do other things and uh open and access my creativity a lot better without that negative um content that i was consuming so is it very important for you to temper yourself and not jump to conclusions not jump to the nonsense so easily it's it will be there for you but if you want change to happen in your life you might have to definitely reduce the amount of consumption you have with some of the craziness the soft violence right Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't be violent. You know, I I say that violence is only necessary in self-defense. Right? So if you need to defend yourself, you need to get violent. Somebody comes in and tries to hurt you, harm you, attack you physically, do what you got to do to protect yourself and your loved ones. Absolutely. Absolutely. Other than that, if you're out here and you're caught, you wrecking shop and you're causing harm to people, or you're out here talking about people, exposing people, trolling, if you're out here and you're a troll, come on, man. I mean, come on now. It's just like, what you doing with your life, bro? <laughs> what are you doing? You wasting valuable time where you can be out here getting some money, 
get some information, some knowledge, something that's going to change your life, spend the time with people you care about. But now you want to troll online. Or you want to watch a marathon of, you know, housewives of you name the city. Like, we got, we have to really be careful. And it ain't just, it's not just media, it's other stuff too. People in your life that are toxic, you know, you're engaging with them, that's violence on your own emotional health. So you have to be very cautious of what you're consuming and how you're spending your time and energy. And if it is involving any type of verbal violence, emotional, social, what I would consider soft violence, you might need to make a shift. Because that stuff is not healthy for you, trust me. But it is there because there's a market for it. Make sure you're not one of the consumers. It's just that simple. So, that concludes part three of the Eight Laws of Change. This is the Woke Podcast. I am your host, Brandon Jones. And as always, if you like the podcast, be sure to share it with someone that you care about. And until next time, be safe. Be constructive, be woke, and I'll holler at you guys soon with part four, closing out the Eight Laws of Change series. Peace, 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 peace.